It's time to see how the lambda expressions look like in action. What are the different ways of using the lambda expressions? So lambda expression, as we have already discussed, an interesting feature from Java 8 release, which has enhanced the expressive power of the language, simplified a certain of a certain task that we earlier used to do with anonymous classes or inner classes. And lambda expressions together with functional interfaces supports the functional programming in Java. When we say functional programming in Java, we generally mean by passing function or functionality as an argument to a method. The way generics reshaped the language features with the release of Java 5, we can say lambda expressions also added certain new syntax element or reshape the way we write code from Java 8 release. So there are two important part of a lambda expression. First, the expression itself. And the second is the functional interface, which is a target type of your lambda expression. So what we have covered so far related to this, we have covered functional interfaces. We have seen the use of anonymous classes and how we can replace that code if anonymous classes are here to use only a functional interface, then we can easily replace that code with a lambda expression. And in that process, we have seen the general syntax of a lambda expression. A lambda expression for a method which takes no argument and returns nothing white. How we can write that lambda expression. Now a lot more is left to be explored. So now we will see how lambda expressions work in different ways. For example, for the methods that takes argument or return argument and for different different scenarios of those return type and those argument types. What is a block lambda expression, which is a lambda expression with a body, with a curly braces. So if you have code of more than one line, you will have to include the curly braces. What is generic functional interfaces? And in case of generic in functional interfaces, how we write our lambda expressions and how we use them. What's the idea of lambda expressions and variable capture? So when we say variable capture, we generally mean by the scope of the variable inside the lambda expression, how the lambda expression is going to access the variable of the enclosing classes or the enclosing block. Then we'll see how lambda expression throws an exception and how it can handle it. What are the different ways of referencing the methods with lambda expressions? And then finally, we will see what are the different predefined functional interfaces that are available in the language for various utility operations inside the java.util.function package. And we can also explore certain commonly asked questions related to lambda expressions. The questions that comes to our mind when we are dealing with the lambda expressions. So let's begin with lambda expressions in action. Let's go back to the previous example. Earlier we're using the sum interface, functional interface. Inside that there was a single abstract method which takes new argument and returns nothing. So for that, we have written this code, the general syntax of lambda expression. But what if we have an interface that takes an argument and returns something? The method inside that takes an argument and returns something. Let's say we have an interface called check string length, which takes an string, a string as an argument and then count the length of that string and return to you. For this kind of scenario, we will have to make certain changes into our lambda expression as well. How we will do that? Let's see. Now to begin writing the lambda expression for such a scenario, we will begin by typing the target type, which is the name of your interface. And that's the target type of my lambda expression. Then I'll begin my lambda expression. 
I'll put the parenthesis here and inside the parenthesis, I'll have to declare the variable to hold the argument of my abstract method. So if my abstract method inside the interface is taking one argument, I'll declare one variable. If it is taking two argument, I'll declare two. Depending upon the number of arguments here, I'll put the variable inside the parenthesis. And what is interesting is that I need not to mark explicitly the type of this variable here. Java compiler will infer it automatically. You can write whatever you want inside it. X, Y, Z, whatever you have in your mind. But just put a variable. And the number of variable depends upon the number of argument inside your abstract method. Now I'll have to count the length of this string that is going to get passed inside the method. So for that, we have a predefined function called length in our string classes. I simply call that length function. And this marks the return type of my abstract method. I need not to even write the return statement here. If you wish, you can. If you don't, you need not to. If it is a single line expression, you can skip that. So how I'll use this now? We begin by calling the function, which is length of a string. We'll pass certain string here. Let's say, welcome to lambda expressions. Now this string will get passed to my abstract method, which takes a string as an argument. Inside the lambda expression, I am calling the length function of this string, which we know returns integer value. So it will return the integer value. And now that integer value we need to get print. So of course, we'll have to surround it by the print element system dot out dot print ln if I run it here it will print the length of this string which is 29 if you want to make it more readable you can write something like this the length of the string passed is Twenty-nine. So that's how we can pass argument to a to our lambda expression to our abstract method of functional interface, and then we can return something out of it as well. This is how this whole thing actually works.